Herbert Rosenbluth, fire control in second class. When we graduated, <coughs> they sent a group of us uh, to Norfolk. And we were in Norfolk not very long, I, don't, I can't recall being there very long, maybe a week. And they gave us assignments. They didn't request, ask us what we request or anything. They just said, you're, you're assigned to the USS McGowan. At such and such a date, beast in such and such a place. That's when I went into, I wasn't going aboard ship, I was going to uh, this group that was at the Navy Yard. Uh, <clears throat> I don't even know if they gave it a name, but anyhow, we were at the Navy Yard. There. And uh, I didn't know until I got there that who, who would be there, and it was uh, like a representative from most of the, almost every division. And to become acquainted with the ship, although we, we were, weren't uh, doing anything, right? we didn't have assignments to do anything except uh, being in the, uh, we had a job that we came out around once in a while that you had to be locked up in the radar room overnight uh, to uh, guard the radar. Other than that, you came in at nine, you went home at five. And that was about a month, I don't know about a month of that. But anyhow, I was assigned to the McGowan, and then the time came to report to the McGowan for, for commissioning. Very simple, very simple. Uh, I don't know whether we even had guests on board. And uh, was it the captain? Uh, <coughs> you know, the, the usual captain speech that uh, uh, welcoming us and. It didn't stand out. Much different on the uh, when I was on the Franklin E. Roosevelt because I said we had a lot of nobilities there. Well, it was exciting because we hadn't been aboard a ship at all before then. I don't think I'd ever been aboard a Navy ship when it was in port, you know, in New York or something. And uh, it was, you know, what's going to happen? You know, the what's ahead for us? What's in the future? And, uh, and, uh, and you, you, met, you met your shipmates. You found your sleeping compartment and uh, things like that. And it was the same, sort of the same feeling when you went into service. You know, what, what, what's it going to be like? What am I going to be doing? Is it going to, you know, going to be interesting? And I found it. I found it to be interesting. I found fire control to be a very interesting subject. I almost stayed in, but my parents didn't didn't go for the idea. And uh, so uh, I had the distinction of being the only known Jewish guy on board ship. That didn't sit well with some people. Uh, other people were very. Uh, Disinterested in it. They, it didn't bother them a bit. I, mean, I say the only known Jewish, there was a guy, when I stood watch in the, in the plotting room, we had, an, had to have an electrician sit with us. He, he had to be on watch there too because of the stable element. And uh, something about him, I figured he was, although his name wasn't too much, and he didn't own up to it. and. Uh, uh, he didn't acknowledge, and he knew who I was, but he didn't. And I found out later, much later on, uh, when uh, I used to go to unions, he never came. But later on, uh, we got a uh, notice. Somebody had sent a notice to the to the re reunion group of his demise, and I can see by his by his obit that. He, he was, but he never owned up to it, but, uh, which, which is a sidelight, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything, but uh, the shakedown crew, okay. Shakedown, uh, we <coughs> got on board ship, uh, they were on board ship, and uh, we went out in the Atlantic, and it was cold, it was cold, very cold, I think it was November, and we uh, went out, uh, 
they used to get frost on the, on the ship, ship, uh, ship you know, where they salt water freezes. I, I always heard it wasn't, doesn't freeze, but it freezes. And we used to get, or well, whatever comes on, on the spray, it, it, it freezes. And we went out a couple of times, you go off for a short period of time, come back again. Uh, and then, you know, you go about just uh, not doing a heck of a lot. And um, we did that a few times until they were satisfied that things were working well. And then we started, uh, we went down to uh, uh, Gitmo, what they call Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay. And uh, we did, we fired our guns, we fired the guns. I think we, we fired them at also, I think they, they had uh, 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 things, uh, things that they towed along the surface. And uh, we had one Liberty in Bermuda. And uh, then we came back and they had to do some repairs, some further problems. So, we had to go into dry dock. I think they had a the uh, uh, main uh, drive shaft. Uh, it wasn't true. It wasn't turning true, and they had to finish, fix that. And uh, then we came back, and uh, I'm sure I, I know we ran into a bad storm around Hatteras. Everybody was seasick, or, or not seasick, or feeling you know, queasy. And then went to the Panama Canal. Well, for a while we were sightseeing, but not long, you know. You know, we like to, the ship's going fairly slowly, and you know, you know, you say, well, I've, I've seen it, so it's, uh, I don't know what we call it, it was outstanding scenery. But in some places in, in the world I've been, uh, it was outstanding. But, uh, you know, Watched it, and uh, and then we were on watch. Then you had your watch too, and when you you weren't able to to, to stand there and observe, and then you were sleeping too sometimes. So so, uh, so you weren't awake the whole the whole time. Stopped at Panama, stopped at San Diego.